thinking of this message and watching that clip and thinking of Philip in Acts chapter 8 and everything in Samaria, it occurred to me that we are a people who plan. We, you and I, we make plans in life. We make plans at home, at work, at school. We make plans about our days and about our weeks. We plan for our vacation time. Amen. We also plan for the school season. Now that the school season is over, we're no longer planning for the school season. What are we planning? We're planning on how to have fun this summer and how to relax. And we plan for vacations, right? Plans are good. We are people who plan. We plan so much so that we teach our children to plan as they grow up in life. We tell them to develop the plan and then stick to the plan as you grow in life because plans and procedures, they serve a very good purpose in our life because they keep us steady and stable because they give us structure as we go on about our days and our weeks, our months, and even the years of our lives. We have that plan, and that plan is what keeps us on course. That plan is that north star, that guiding star that directs us and, and keeps us steady, stable, strong, and structured during the sunny days of life, but especially and essentially during those storms of life. Mm -hmm. How many people have ever had this said to you, or maybe you said it to somebody, or you thought it yourself? Maybe the Holy Spirit said it to you on the, during the storms of life. Stick to the plan. Things aren't going so well right now, stick to the plan. Oh, it's easy to stick to the plan on sunny days. It's essential to stick to the plan during the storms of life. We're people who plan. And it's good to plan. It's not that it's bad to plan. It's good to plan. I believe God has a plan. And I believe God's word reveals God's plan to us. So it's good. And it's godly to plan. We are a people who plan. And it's not unique to us. I think everybody plans. And I think even if you look back at people in the Bible, they are more like us than they are different from us. They were people who had plans too. Everybody had these plans in the Gospels until Jesus interrupted all of them. He interrupted their plans. He wasn't going according to their plans. Life all of a sudden didn't go according to plan anymore. All of a sudden now the plans were interrupted. They were changed when Jesus walked into every, each one of their lives. Life interrupted. Don't you just hate it when that happens? Especially if you're like an uber planner and an uber scheduler. You know, you're so anal about it, you just hate being interrupted. Maybe it happens at work. You're at work and you're headlong into something, and your boss comes up to you and he says, I want you to stop doing that right now and start doing this new thing over here right now. I thank God that the people here at Victory that work here on staff don't have a boss like that. <laughs> Welcome to Life Interrupted. Life is full of interruptions, by the way. If you're still small about this side, you haven't lived long enough yet, Jack, to realize that life is will be full of interruptions. Your entire life. That doesn't make it all bad. I mean, some interruptions, they are usually bad because they, they're usually annoying and frustrating because they're unforeseen and, and, and we're unaware of them. They just kind of all of a sudden happen to us in life. But not all interruptions are bad. Some interruptions are really fun, as parents can tell you. <clears throat> you know, when you're headlong into something at home and then your child runs in to tell you about how they, they're successfully potty trained now. And believe me, there's great joy in the house when that happens. <laughs> or you're headlong into something and they, they run, run in to tell you, hey, Daddy, I lost my first tooth. Or, Dad, I learned how to ride a bike. But sometimes losing your tooth and riding a bike, they're the same event. <laughs> but, you know, I found my balance, Dad. Or, Dad, I made the team. Or, Dad, I got a really good grade in school. Or I got good grades, plural, in school. Those are really cool interruptions. Those are fun things that interrupt our daily routine and our daily plan. So maybe it's not that all interruptions are bad. Maybe it depends on what the interruptions are that determine if the interruptions are bad or are good. You know, throughout the Bible and throughout life, God interrupts us. We have an interrupting God. I don't know if you've noticed that recently, but he does. 
I mean, I guess he can because God is life himself, so I guess he has the right to interrupt life anytime he wants to, and he frequently does. We see that in the Bible. Do you know back in Genesis chapter 1 that he interrupted nothingness with creation? That was probably a good interruption. <laughs> and then he interrupted darkness when he said, let there be light. That was also a good interruption. You see, God interrupts sin with salvation. He interrupts guilt with grace. He interrupts frustrations and fears with faith. He interrupts hopelessness with hopefulness. He interrupts helplessness with helpfulness. And he interrupts hurts with healing. He interrupts death with eternal resurrected life. He interrupts life itself with himself. He interrupts loneliness with his presence. He interrupts our weakness with his power. And he interrupts hate with his love. <clears throat> Jesus is an interruption in our lives. And as soon as I say that, some of you are thinking, oh, that you made that sound bad, Pastor. No. It's just factual. Jesus has interrupted your life. And you should be grateful for it. Because in fact, if Jesus hasn't interrupted your life, you might not be a Christian. I thought I was a Christian. I don't remember when Jesus interrupted my life. You don't remember. When Jesus interrupted your life, you might be a really good person. You might be a really good churchgoer. But if you can't remember the interruption, you may not be a Christian. He interrupts people's lives by challenging them to conform to him, to connect with other people around them that they maybe never have even thought about before. I give you two lives interrupted. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Two people who had probably never thought about each other before, but the common denominator through both was God. Here's the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8 coming to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover at the temple, which is to celebrate God's salvation of saving the Jews in Exodus chapter 12 and 13 and, and on forward. The Ethiopian eunuch probably never thought that he would be interrupted by actually receiving God's salvation in Jesus Christ. Just like I remember Friday night, January 6, 1984, in Richard Little Bell's apartment, I guarantee you the Ethiopian eunuch never forgot the day he got saved. Never forgot the day God interrupted his life with somebody else whom he had never met before, and he had never even thought of before. See, welcome to Christianity 101. Life interrupted. Christianity really is about God interrupting life. And not just in salvation, but salvation and beyond life interrupting. Life is full of interruptions, Jack. There's lots of things in life you're not going to plan for. The good interruptions always come from God. The other stuff comes from a leaky pipe in your seat. But my question to you is, do you ever <coughs> think about being interrupted by God? Do you ever expect, to, do you live your life waiting to be interrupted by God, or do you ignore even the thought of being interrupted by God? How many times do we go about the ordinariness of our day and expect extraordinariness to happen? Do you know if you look throughout people's lives, throughout the Bible, God is constantly interrupting <coughs> the ordinary with his extraordinary. God is constantly interrupting the mundane with his miraculousness. Do we live that way? Do we think that way? Do we expect that to happen in our lives? Do you expect what to happen in, in your life? Do you expect your life to be interrupted by God now that you're a saved saint of God, a Christian signed, sealed, and delivered, waiting to go to heaven? Do you ever live your life on a daily basis waiting to be interrupted by God? If you look at people in the Bible who were <coughs> successfully interrupted by God, it's because they didn't ignore the interruption. I've come up with three ways, or I should say the Holy Spirit, I believe, has given me three ways that we can work with God who interrupts our lives. Because after all, if God's going to interrupt our lives anyway, we might as well work with him. We might as well make it productive, right? Okay, so three ways to work with God who interrupts our lives. Number one, we need to be attentive and alert to the spiritual interruptions. 
we, we can't ignore the Spirit. Now, you can't ignore the Spirit as much, but you shouldn't ignore the Spirit. It occurs to me that ever since Acts chapter 2, maybe back into Luke 24, all of the apostles lived attentive and expecting and alert of the Holy Spirit of God in their life. Certainly, in Acts chapter 2 and beyond, they were aware and alert of the Holy Spirit of God in their lives. And Paul, the apostle in 1 Corinthians 12, I think it's pretty much the first verse, says, I don't want you to be ignorant brothers and sisters, of spiritual things. He goes on to list the gifts of God. The Holy Spirit does not want us to be ignorant of God or ignoring of God. The Holy Spirit of God wants us to be alert and attentive to the interruptions of God. So first, we need to be alert and aware and attentive to the, the Spirit of God's Voice. Jesus said in John 14, 15, and 16 that the Holy Spirit is constantly speaking to you and in you and through you, reminding you of the things that Jesus has said. He is the Spirit of truth. He's trying to lead, guide, and direct the paths of our lives. He's, he's trying to get our attention and alter the plan. He's trying to interrupt us. We should not be ignorant of that or ignoring of that. We should be attentive to the interruptions of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. Second to that, we must be willingly available to be interrupted by God. That means you live a life that you are willing to be interrupted by God. It's almost as if you are maybe looking for it. You're expecting it. You've got your plan. That's fine. It's good to have plans. But your plans are open to change by God. Lord, if it be your will, whatever you want, got it. I'm going to do this, but if you interrupt me with something else, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I forgot how the rest of the song ends. You ever hear that sing that song in church? It goes way, way, way back. It, it does. Way, it's like early 80s. I remember in church when I first got saved hearing that and it struck a chord with me. Philip was willingly available to be interrupted by God. Philip could have responded to God this way. Well, I get it. I, I get it. You want me to go to Gaza and everything, but I'm, I'm preaching right here now, God. I'm doing this thing right here in Samaria. I, I don't think your interruption is as important as what you make it out to be. Oh, Philip would have never said that. No Christian should ever say that to God, but I feel people do. I feel there are Christians all the time that God's trying to get their attention and interrupt them, and they're, they're like, well, I, I can get God, but, but what I'm doing right now is more important. Oh, we might not say it that way, but we feel it that way. I'll, I'll get to it, Lord. Just let me finish here. You know? Available and, uh, and attentive, alert and aware. And that goes to the third thing. You need to have the right attitude to be interrupted by God. Philip had the right attitude because Philip went when God told him to go. Philip reminds me a lot in the motif, so to speak, of Mary in Luke chapter 1, when God interrupted Mary's life and said, by the way, I want to put the Savior of the world in you. And Mary, when her life was interrupted, she was planning on marrying Joseph and having kids the natural way, and she eventually would get to that. But right now, God wanted to interrupt her early. And Mary didn't say, I'm not married. I can't do that. That would be socially unacceptable and very awkward for me. What did Mary say in Luke chapter 1? Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me as you have said. Mary had the right attitude. That's why God interrupted Mary, because God and Mary would have the right attitude. Maybe God only interrupts people who he know, knows is alert, attentive, available, and has the right attitude. Maybe the rest of us he just forgets. It doesn't even bother him. You won't be like that. You won't be somebody God ignores. Or do you want to be somebody God uses? I would rather be somebody God interrupts than be somebody God ignores. You hear that this morning? Because I really feel passionate about us leaving here this morning realizing God will interrupt your life again. Probably sooner rather than later. Because life and Christianity is all about being interrupted. Interruptions in life can be bad. Interruptions in life in Christ are always good. But they require us being attentive, being alert, being available, 
and having the right attitude of, I am the Lord's servant. And after all, isn't that what we all are? Aren't we all the servants of the Most High God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Master, the Savior, the Lord of our lives? And do not lords have the right to interrupt their servants? 